It's time to eat. What are you hungry for? Sit down and get ready to consume an abundance of fantasy football knowledge from Ross Tucker and Joe Dolan. Feed me now! I'm starving! On the Fantasy Feast Eating Podcast. Yeah, let's eat, baby. It is the Fantasy Feast Eating Podcast. We are, of course, presented by DraftKings. Love those guys. Love all of you that take a listen or watch YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. All of our shows. We got Greg Cosell today on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Tomorrow, I'll make my picks. Earlier in the week, we had Alex Anzalone, the stud linebacker for the Detroit Lions. I always do my power rankings on Tuesday. I had a new number one. Of course, the College Draft Podcast, Even Money, are awesome as well, especially if you like making the games a little bit more interesting, which, by the way, is what fantasy football does. Makes the games a little bit more interesting. I'm Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman. Got a bunch of podcasts I just told you about, a bunch of media gigs. This is the show that's so nice, we actually do it twice. Joe and I record these back-to-back on Wednesdays. And then we do episode one, drop it as soon as we can. Episode two, shortly after midnight, so we don't mess up your podcast apps. You have plenty of time to set your lineup before Thursday night football. The Joe I'm referring to is, of course, the fantasy gangster, Joe Dolan. At FG underscore Dolan. You can use the the code 23FEAST at fantasypoints.com, where Joe and his squadron, of fantasy guys has more information than you can even imagine. Like you literally, if your goal was to read everything on the fantasypoints.com website before the games started, you still would not be able to accomplish it. It's like college and you get the syllabus and you got to decide what you can and what you can't actually read. It's unbelievable. The smorgasbord of information that they have Do people elsewhere know what a smorgasbord is, or is that just an Eastern PA thing, Joe? I know what it is, but I I don't know if uh, I feel like I feel like that's a relatively ubiquitous term. So I I I don't know. I thought that about pierogies, and then nobody on the West Coast even knows what a pierogi is. Do do you know what quates are? I've heard of them. What is it? So uh, I'm from I'm from like the Lehigh Valley, um, southeastern Pennsylvania, north of north of like the Philadelphia area. And that's where the slate belt is. And quates are like a game like horseshoes that instead of uh, instead of uh, uh, of a stake in the ground, it's a slate board that has a that has like um that has a ring in the middle. Uh, and you throw and you throw rubber uh rubber rings at it to try to. They're pretty heavy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that game. Yep, yep. That's like a Lehigh Valley thing. So yeah, that, some some of those things. Like I even when I went to Penn State and I was like, ah, oh, you guys play quates, and they're like, what? I don't know. What, I know what pierogies are, but I but they my Western PA friends did not know what quates were. The Titans are at the Bucks, Joe. We're wrapping up the one o'clock games. Evidently, there's a bunch of them. Will Levis looks good to me, Joe. Yeah, like, I looks, think he looks really good. So I think it was evident to me and um, my Yinzer friends. Uh, we we have a a, a group chat with uh, us, us guys from Penn State, and uh, my Yinzer friends were sitting there watching that Thursday night game last week with, with the Titans and the Steelers. And they're like, oh, jeez, ah, oh, yeah, Will, Levis looks better than Pickett. Pickett needs benched, you know, like, they're, they're and he did. I, I thought Will Levis looked better than Kenny Pickett in that game. He did just the talent difference jumped off the page. I know Levis threw the interception and didn't win the game, but I was impressed with Levis. And now Billy Denham is going to be their starting quarterback for the rest of the year, uh, as Mike Vrabel said, which is the smart call. Levis, I mean, Levis already has thrown more touchdowns this year than, than Ryan Tannehill did, and he just gives this offense a different level of juice. So, um, wheels up with, like, guys like DeAndre. I know DeAndre Hopkins has been um, dinged up, but wheels up on guys like him, you know, maybe even Chigakonkwo on the lower end because I think Will Levis gives this passing game a little bit more juice, and I think he's going to help open up the run game for Derrick Henry, who did not get traded, obviously. So Will Levis gives this Titan offense a lot more to be excited about than Ryan Tannehill did. Uh, I don't understand what happened to Chigakonkwo. I thought he was going to have a huge year. They don't so throw him the ball. They don't, and then uh, 
two weeks ago in Levis's four touchdown game, he dropped a pass on which he still would have been running. And if you remember, I think it might have even been week one where Ryan Tannehill overthrew him on a ball where he still would be running. So it's just been a, a, a conflagration of things that have happened to Chigakonkwo that, uh, that have kind of limited his fantasy output. All right, let's get to the other side. The Bucks, man, Joe, felt like Baker did his part, taking him down the field for a touchdown. They still lost that game. Yeah, um, the thing that's that's most notable for for the Bucks though right now, this is actually finally a good matchup for Rashad White on the ground. He's had a bunch of bad ones. Um, consider this. The Titans' defense has been really bad on the ground recently. After allowing zero games of 100 non-scramble rushing yards between week two of 2022 and week four of this year, Tennessee has allowed over 100 non-scramble rushing yards in each of its last four games, and they've allowed over three yards before contact in two of those four games. Over the last five weeks, no team has allowed more yards before contact on the grounds than the Titans, and Rashad White has finally established himself as the Buccaneers' bell cow running back. The Buccaneers clearly took an approach – Earlier this year, they said, Rashad White's not getting it done. Let's get Sean Tucker involved. Let's get Keyshawn Vaughn involved. Let's get Chase Edmonds involved. And all of those guys were demonstrably worse than Rashad White. So White has this role in the passing game, and he's got a good matchup in the running game. This is a good week to use Rashad White in DFS uh, if you have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on your mind. All right. What about this next matchup? This is interesting. The Falcons with Heineke again against Arizona, who we believe as we record this Wednesday morning, it's Kyler Murray yeah, time. It's gonna be Joe, Kyler. I bet you've gotten a lot um, of questions from people. I, I gotta be honest, Ross. To I was to pretty Kyler thrilled to see Atlanta lose that game last week because I'm getting sick and tired of Arthur Smith being this kind of a uh, it's you know coaches coaches are, are are totally entitled to use players how they see fit. It's when they condescend, you know, like you know, fantasy pays your check, buddy. You know, like uh, the reporters have a right to ask why these players who you drafted in the top 10 of the NFL draft aren't getting targets. Reporters have a right to ask why Jonu Smith literally leads the te- the, the Falcons offense in touches in the, inside the 10-yard line. Um, and Arthur Smith, they lost last week uh, to Josh Dobbs. Now they've got Kyler Murray who, look, Atlanta – Arizona's not a good football team, okay? And I don't think Kyler Murray's going to magically come in here and make them a good football team. So I'd have Atlanta favored in this game. But I do wonder if eventually Arthur Smith's going to get humbled into the fact that, you know what, maybe I should use Bijan Robinson more. Bijan Robinson, he's excelling away from the ball. Give me a freaking break. He's not even in the game in the red zone. Like, get get, get this guy out of town. I'm tired of him. Um, Drake London, let's see if he's back this week. And if he is back this week, let's see if he gets out targeted by Kadaro Hodge because he probably will. What about Arizona with Kyler Murray? So I bet you've gotten a lot of questions about him. Well, first and foremost, I picked him up everywhere I needed a running back. Uh, excuse me, a quarterback. That is not a Freudian slip because I, there is a running back I am going to talk about here. Um, I needed it, Anywhere I needed him, like, look, he's playing for his job. I think he knows it. He can't possibly not. They're 1-8, and eight, and they're right now slated to have the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. At the very least, Kyler Murray should be looking to convince another NFL team to take on his contract This, if the Arizona Cardinals decide to rebuild with a new quarterback, be that Caleb Williams or Drake May or whoever. Um, So Kyler Murray has all the incentive in the world to come out here and play well. So I think Hollywood Brown and Trey McBride are two buy low players. These are guys who I'd like to be adding to my fantasy team right now with Kyler Murray coming back. You know, we had those guys have a decent run with Josh Dobbs. Clayton Toon was just completely overmatched last week. Moreover, Jonathan Gannon, the coach of the uh, the Cardinals, said James Conner, who's eligible to come off of IR this week, looked faster uh, uh, than he did before he got injured. I find that hard to believe. But James Conner was a was a locked in RB one before he got hurt. Um, and I expect James Conner's going to come back and have a pretty sizable role here for the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, you're right, Joe. He was playing awesome. He was playing before very well. he went down with it. Yeah. I mean, they were a better offense with him and Dobbs and what those guys had doing. I will say this. It'd be a little bit weird if Kyler's not a little rusty. I mean, it's been a oh, year he be. since he played in the game almost. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a big difference. At least for this week. What about the Lions and the Chargers, Joe? 
this should be a fun game. Um, the Lions obviously went on by. Here is the big news for Detroit. Um, David Montgomery is going to be eligible to return. And Dan Campbell had a quote about Jameer Gibbs this week. Let me see if I can find the, the exact quote. Um, but it was essentially uh, that Jameer Gibbs is not going to have the role that he had back in week number eight before their bye. Um, yeah, Campbell said, uh, I don't, here, here's what he said, quote, I don't think that I see Gibbs getting 65 plays, but he's going to get his fair share now. I think it'll be a little bit by committee and make sure we get those guys their touches. Gibbs will get his touches. That means to me that, although I still like Jameer Gibbs, and and by the way, um, he had the single best game in terms of missed tackles forced in the history of the Fantasy Points data suite, which is now three years of data. So he he was excellent in that game uh, before their bye. But um, I expect that he's going to come into his part-time role again with David Montgomery returning this week. And I am really fascinated to see, not that you can play Jamison Williams, I'm really fascinated to see if the trade for Donovan Peoples-Jones relegates Jamison Williams to even more of a part-time role. Yeah, what did you think of that, Joe? That was interesting. I I thought it was interesting because, uh, now look, Marvin Jones obviously stepped away from the team for personal reasons, so that's more of a one-to-one personnel replacement there, but Donovan Peoples-Jones has made some plays in his NFL career, and like, I wonder if they just feel like he could be a more reliable deep threat than Jamison Williams at this stage. And and that's going to be fascinating to see. Wow. Yeah, that doesn't speak real well for Jamison Williams, that's for sure. Chargers won a second game in a row. Uh, they didn't exactly light it up on Monday night uh, offensively. That game was a uh, – Ross, I I woke up on the couch at 12.30 on, on tu- uh, in Tuesday morning, and I'm like, well, I guess that game put me to sleep. Um And it did. Justin Herbert, 16 of 30 for 136. That Jet defense is really good. And the the problem here for the Chargers is they stupidly in week eight tried to get Josh Palmer to play through his injury, and now he's on IR. And now they're really reeling at wide receiver because they did not anticipate. Look, they basically told you with their usage of Quentin Johnston, he was being used as their number four receiver before Mike Williams went down. Um, and then he was used as the number three before Josh Palmer went down. And now he has to be the number two out of necessity. They didn't, they unfortunately knew they had availability issues at wide receiver and they're all coming to pass here. And I don't know if they viewed him as ready. The problem is, Nobody played well on the passing game for the Chargers last week against the Jets. I think they'll have some more success against the Lions this week, uh, who have a very strong run defense. You know, Austin Eckler got his two touchdowns, but Austin Eckler's going to have to do it in the passing game, I think, this week against the uh, against the, the Lions. And one player who I would be looking maybe to invest in, especially if you haven't gotten one of these other tight ends, is Gerald Everett. Uh, who else are they throwing to right now outside of, of Keenan Allen? If you're feeling good about your fantasy picks, Joe, but you're not sure what to eat, just make it easy on yourself. Order in on DoorDash. Now you can root for your squad while your food and drinks are on the way. So that means burgers, chips, dips, soda, pizza, wings, and so much more delivered straight to your door. And then you guys know how I roll. In terms of washing it down, it can only be Labatt Blue Light. If you want to take things to the next level, I don't care what you're watching. I don't care what you're doing. Drink some Labatt Blue Lights with your friends. Live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly. Beer, Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. Joe, let's talk Giants and Cowboys. I uh-huh. guess it's 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 Danny DeVito, Tommy DeVito time. <laughs> it's it's a, uh, yeah. Get your shine box, Ross. Uh, it's it's Tommy DeVito time. I mean, this is a disaster. Saquon Barkley or bust. And and uh, look, the Giants are 16-point underdogs in a game that has a sub-40 projected total. Um, that just goes to show you, Vegas does not expect the Giants to score many points, nor do I. This is a disaster. They're the worst team in football. That's it. Like that, the all the all the bounces that they got last week last year to put them in the playoffs have gone completely the opposite way. There is, if I had a to win a game this year. The rest of the season, and I could pick my opponent, I would pick the Giants over the Panthers. I'd pick the Giants over the Cardinals. I'd pick the Giants over the Bears. They are the worst team in professional football. Wow. Uh, What about the Cowboys? So the Cowboys did what 
they should have done last week against the Eagles. They attacked the middle of the field, which is where the Eagles have deficiencies in coverage, and they did not challenge Darius Slay or James Bradbury on the outside whatsoever last week. Um, now, I expect that C.D. Lamb has really kind of emerged here as their go-to guy in the passing game, as he should have been. They were They were kind of foolishly... You know, mixing the ball around. Michael Gallup stinks. You know, Brandon Cooks is washed. Jalen Tolbert's coming on a little bit. Um, and and I know Cowboy fans were complaining about Dak Prescott throwing that ball to him on that fourth down to James Bradbury, uh, who broke it up because he had Jake Ferguson. But I think Jalen Tolbert's actually given them a little bit. And if you're in a deeper league and are looking to pick up a wide receiver, I think Jalen Tolbert is certainly somebody wor- worth looking at. But here is the question I need. To, to have answered this week with the Cowboys 16 point favorites. No player in the NFL has had a longer run of touches without scoring than Tony Pollard. He hasn't found the end zone since he fell into it twice in week one. Well, I have a lot of good news. If you if you're a manager who has Tony Pollard on your team, a lot of it because number one, Dallas has the advantage in the trenches in this game. And it's against the Giants. The team Pollard did score twice on in week one. And that's when it looked like Pollard was destined to be like a top three fantasy running back. No player in fantasy football has underperformed relative to his role as spectacularly as Pollard has this year. He's sixth in expected fantasy points per game and 20th in total fantasy points per game. But this spot couldn't possibly be better for him. The Cowboys, again. Massive favorites against Tommy DeVito, and the Giants just allowed Josh Jacobs' first real spike week of the 2023 season. Like Pollard, Jacobs was a massive expected fantasy points underachiever heading into last week. Ooh, that's interesting. That's a good nugget I was not aware of. Let's talk Commanders and Seahawks, Joe. What do you got? Uh, The Commanders, uh, look, look, here's another guy. You know, when I watch him, there's a lot he does wrong. But I have to imagine, like, you look at that game last week with the Patriots playing the Commanders. And if you're the Patriots, which of those quarterbacks in that game looked like a first-round pick and which one looked like a fifth-round pick? I would have to imagine the Patriots were sitting there saying, Patriot fans were sitting there saying, this guy, Howell, has a better mentality. He's got a much better arm than Mac Jones. What are we paying for? You know, so Sam Howell has done some good things this year. And you have to keep in mind that I also am looking at Sam Howell almost like if he was a first-round pick, would we be looking at him as being a really promising type of guy vis-a-vis somebody the commanders might look to replace in the draft this year? I've been uh, – look, he's been, he's taken too many stacks. He's cleaned that up the last couple weeks, by the way. Good coaching by Eric Bieniemy. Uh, getting the ball into the hands of somebody like Jahan Dotson who can do more after the catch and he'll get the ball out of his hands quickly. And Sam Howell has emerged as somebody who's like a top 12 fantasy quarterback right now. They're not really running the ball all that well. Um, a couple weeks ago, they tried to get Chris Rodriguez involved. I don't think he's touched the ball since. Uh, Brian Robinson had a solid game, but solid was about it last week against the Patriots. And Sam Howell dropped back and threw the ball 45 times. They're a pass-first team right now, and they should be a pass-first team. They have a little bit of confidence in Howell, uh, who will throw a bad interception now and again as well. They have good receivers, you know, McLaren, Dotson, um, Logan Thomas. All of them had six or more targets last week against the Patriots coming off a game in which all of them had a lot of work against the Eagles. So it looks like the commanders are starting to really – find out what they do wrong, what they do right. And honestly, they're kind of letting Sam Howell wing it. And I think that's the right approach for the commanders. What about the Seahawks? I was kind of feeling them for a while there, Joe. That was a disaster against the Ravens. <sighs> so I, I would anticipate a bounce back spot here. Now, this was extremely similar to what happened to the Lions when they went to Baltimore, right? It was a complete burn the tape game. We hadn't seen that from Jared Goff, and as it, as I expected, they bounced back against the Raiders and had a strong game uh, offensively. I think the Seahawks bounced back this week, but we have seen a few more cracks in that armor than we had seen from the Lions as well. So Geno's had a couple of really down games, and it certainly didn't help that DK Metcalf was playing through pain uh, for the Seahawks. One thing to keep in mind, They're starting to give Zach Charbonnet a few more snaps in that backfield. And I wonder if Pete Carroll is starting to not get tired of, but starting to 
get slightly annoyed by Kenneth Walker's sometimes his uh, propensity for bouncing runs and freestyling. And Pete Carroll, to me, see, I always thought, like, first and foremost, Kenneth Walker is an incredibly talented running back, which is why the Seahawks drafted him in the second round. But I always thought if Pete Carroll would be annoyed by that style of back that he is, that kind of LaShawn McCoy-ish, you know, freestyling, Barry Sanders, hey, Saquon Barkley, hey, you might have blocked me three, but I want 30. And sometimes it's going to get me one when I should have had three yards. That's what Kenneth Walker is, and I wonder if Zach Charbonnet, as the weather gets colder, becomes sort of the snow tires of this offense. Ooh, I like that. I might use that expression at some point. In football, Joe, the fourth quarter is where the magic happens. It's where games are won, where champions are made. In business, it's where sales teams become legends. That's why HubSpot built Sales Hub, to give sales reps the deal-making tools they need to win their Q4. Sales Hub's prospecting workspace organizes your schedule, goals, and to-do list in one place to save your team precious fourth quarter time. And smart sequences help sales reps close deals faster than ever. So get ready to dominate Q4 with Sales Hub. Learn more at HubSpot.com slash sales. All right, two more games to go, Joe. Jets at the Raiders. Go. Oh. <laughs> Yay. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I do not want to watch the Jets in primetime again. Um, I, I cannot believe they didn't flex this game out. But I do have a, 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 a matchup advantage here for the Jets that, um, that I'm kind of l- liking, uh, at least on some level. Um, I think the Jets have the advantage in the trenches in the run game. By our rush grade at FantasyPoints.com, um, they have the number one rush grade of the week. Over the last three contests against the Eagles, Giants, and Chargers, Brees Hall has totaled just 106 rushing yards on 40 rushing attempts. Um, meanwhile, over the last five weeks, the Raiders' defense has allowed the second most yards before contact per attempt. That last week, they allowed over three yards per contact, uh, yards before contact, rather, per attempt against Saquon Barkley, despite the fact that the Giants' offense was completely one-dimensional. The only thing you needed to stop was Saquon Barkley, and they still struggled to get to him at the line of scrimmage. It should be noted that Divine Diablo, the linebacker, missed last week's game for the Raiders with an ankle injury, and the Jets could also be getting Dwayne Brown back from his shoulder injury, which would allow them to put their best five uh, uh, offensive linemen out there together, which would certainly help Brees Hall bounce back this week against the Raiders. As for the Raiders offensively, what would you see in the first game with the new OC? And Aiden O'Connell did some really positive things. Yeah, here's what I saw in the first game with the new OC. I saw a franchise and a group of players who had the weight of the world taken off of their shoulders. You know, I know there was people making fun of them, you know, for smoking cigars in the locker room. But you know what, Ross? They hated their boss. And they probably are having more fun coming to work. And oh, by the way, you do know the Raiders are 4-5, and five, right? Like, you might think the Raiders aren't going anywhere. I might think the Raiders aren't going anywhere. But don't tell a group of NFL players who are 4-5 and after nine games that they're not going anywhere. They're right in the thick of the hunt. And now they have a locker room that has rallied around Antonio Pierce and has a loosey-goosey atmosphere. And I think when you're walking on eggshells every week coming to your job, you're feeling good about yourself. So I feel much better about Josh Jacobs. Even though he didn't have a huge game, I'd feel much better about Devontae Adams. And I feel better about Jacoby Myers just knowing that they are coming to work each and every day and they're excited to do so without Josh McDaniel's shadow over the organization. Finally, Joe, we got the Broncos and the Bills. Monday night, I'll be in the booth with Kevin Harlan. What do you got? So here is a really interesting thing about the Bills. I thought, you know, earlier in the season, they were starting to get James Cook involved. You know, oh, let's not have Josh Allen do everything. And what did I see on Sunday night against the Bengals? Josh Allen hero ball. If Josh Allen wasn't making a play, the Bills weren't doing anything. He's leading them in rushing. He's out there. Ru- Josh, go make a play. That's That was the play call. And I s- certainly wonder if they, that's one of the reasons they signed Leonard Fournette. They want somebody who can, again, to use that expression that I used earlier, be the snow tires on this offense. Somebody who's going to come in. They, they like Latavius Murray in pass pro, but he hasn't really been getting work. They don't trust um, James Cook inside the red zone. Are they going to give... 
uh, Leonard Fournette some of that work uh, in, in this game. I think he's a fine speculative ad off the waiver wire. You know, you know about the Bills. Like you're certainly playing Stephon Diggs. You're certainly playing Dalton Kincaid. Gabe Davis is like the king wide receiver three. He can give you a bagel and he can go for eight for a hundred. And I think you still have to play him. But I wonder if they're going to try to fix this run game with Leonard Fournette. Check him on social media at fg underscore Dolan. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. Other than that, I'm stuffed. We're done. Thanks for tuning in to Fantasy Feast. Make sure to also check out the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Even Money, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. (laughs) 